Hello everyone, and welcome back to Skyrim. Um, as I said, some time has passed. Um, I did the thing where we went to see that guy. Um, first, the guy at the college. Then we went to go see the guy out in the ice trying to figure out that thing for the Dwemer. And then we went delved into the Dwemer. I basically tried to do a speed run of that place, just kind of running through and getting to the area where the scroll was kept. And, uh, we, you know, I did the thing, got the scroll, went back, and, uh, unlocked the quest where Hermaeus Mora, of course, was asking me to, uh, you know, get the blood to discern it, you know. So, we've got the scroll, and we're gonna go take it to the beach. Before we do that, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, sometimes reality can often be disappointing. That is, it was. Now... Reality can be whatever I want. <laughs> so I mentioned that there was a mod I had for this where you can find the Infinity Stones. This, the Ether, was down there in the room where the Elder Scrolls is. So I'm going to drop it for a moment. Let me show you what happens when you pick it up. Reality Stone, Forge added, Melt added, Brew added, Enchant added. The idea is that the Reality Stone allows you to just you know, affect reality to give yourself those kind of things to allow you to actually, you know, just do those things like right here if I wanted. So let's say if we scroll down to reality, I can then, allows you to brew potions anywhere, enchant items anywhere, forge items anywhere, and melt materials anywhere because it's the reality stone. So of course it does. Now, there are other things that you can be able to do as well, such as, you know, for example, let's go ahead and just do this. Let's see what happens. Boom. And now I can just forge whatever I want here. Now, if you're curious about some of the other stuff that involves the uh, reality stone, as I said, you can either just go ahead and collect the stones and then get the gauntlet. But there are other things that you can be able to specifically make involving sp the specific um, infinity stones as well in this. Um, if I can find some of them uh, involving the reality stone. There's the scepter, which involves the other stone, not this one. Um, so I think there may be one, it's probably in the A's, isn't it, for ether? Just move up, no? So anyways, you're supposed to be able to then go ahead and make some other things like, there's the Tesseract, there's the Orb, there's the Infinity Rings, you can actually make the rings. I mentioned this before, I just wanted to go ahead and, uh, bring it up. Uh, now that I actually have... The, oh, here we go. Here's one of the things you can make. The Ether Staff. But in order to use this, you need an Unchanted Alteration Staff, and then you can combine them if you want. So I just thought I'd go ahead and share that little bit right there. Hey, Serana. I've also been looking at some other mods as well, such as uh, possible uh, Romance or Marriage mods, specifically for Serana, which, of course, as I mentioned, there's a ton of mods for Serana. Um, there's a couple different ones, like... Like, if I was role-playing this as a vampire character, I would get one of them so I could be able to, you know, have the option to actually, you know, marry Serana if I wanted. So, since it's basically only possible through mods. Alright, so just to go ahead and uh, reiterate what I was saying before, we have... Where is it? Mm, hold on. Oh, wait, it's, it's going to be over here, isn't it? I'm an idiot. Uh, here it is, the Elder Scroll Dragon. Um. Hi, Dexian. Yes, how may I serve you, my lord? Um. I brought the Elder Scrolls. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you with the scrolls any longer, my lord. Please. Do not be angry with me. What are you talking about? I'm afraid in my haste to read the first scroll, I neglected the time I needed to prepare. The failure is purely mine to bear. As you can see from my bandages, it's not that I am unwilling. It's that I am physically unable. You're blind. Oh, please, my lord. Please, forgive me. I don't suppose there's a cure. If only such a miracle existed. I'd overcome the impossible in order to secure it, if it meant pleasing you. 
Then we have no further need of you. Although I would gladly die by your hand, perhaps I could offer an alternative way to read the scrolls. Hmm. Go on. Oh, thank you, my lord. Thank you. You know, since I have the reality stone, I may as well just start playing this up as if I was Thanos. The the good one from Infinity War, not the jerk from uh, Endgame. Just get to it. Scattered across Tamriel are secluded locations known only as Ancestor Glades. There's one in Skyrim in the Pine Forest. Performing the ritual of the Ancestor Moth within the Glade should provide the answers you seek. Explain this ritual. It involves carefully removing the bark from a canticle tree, which will in turn attract ancestor moths to you. Once enough of the moths are following, they'll provide you with the second sight needed to decipher the scrolls. Carefully gather the bark? How? In keeping with tradition, you must use a specific tool in the ancestor glade, an implement known as a draw knife. Every moth priest is taught this ritual, but few ever get the chance to perform it. You should consider yourself fortunate if it works for you. Do I need to read the scrolls in any particular order? From what I saw in the vision, the Elder Scroll which foreshadows the defiance of the gods with the blood of mortals is the key to the prophecy. Hmm. So what went wrong? Deciphering one of the Elder Scrolls is nothing like reading a simple book. There is quite a bit of ritual and concentration required. It can take months or even years to complete a single scroll, and even then, months to recover. Hmm, so is it normal for Moth Priest to go blind? Sadly, yes. It is the inevitable fate we agree to pursue when reading the Elder Scrolls. It generally does not occur until a Moth Priest is in his latter years, but in my case, I simply was not preparing myself properly. Hmm. Decide it can take months or even years to complete the all right, all right. And even hmm. ten months. Let's see. To cover. So now we have to go find a moth priest knife. Right behind you. So does it bother you that we're working with your father? I figured it would be more of an issue for you. This isn't going to end well, is it? No, it's probably not. I mean, what do you think my father will do when we bring him the bow? Mm, he'll want to use it. Of course he will. But at that point, he'll have everything he's ever wanted. He won't need either of us anymore. You think he'll try to kill us? You'll have shown yourself to be strong. Which means you can't be allowed to just stick around. And I'll be unnecessary once he has it. Well, then I suppose we'll just have to take care of him. <laughs> Not until we have the bow, but you're right. This won't be easy, but we can handle it. And then once we've taken care of him, I will be the new lord of this castle. <laughs> Lead on. Smile upon you, my lord. That's actually what happens at the end, by the way. I'm not joking or kidding or exaggerating. That's actually like one of our rewards. We get this place as like a base. It's pretty great. Part of the fun also comes in after you do that, in which case you get the different types of missions, such as, hey, storm Fort Dawnguard and take them all out, because they're going to be a nuisance for the rest of the time. Sorry. It's all right. All right, I'm going to quick save here. This can get a little strange. Mainly in terms of... Not very impressive, is it? If this ends up being a wasted trip, your friend Dexian and I are going to have some words when we get back. Take it easy on him. He's a blind man now. But there's an... But uh, I believe right here, it can actually, like right here can actually kind of get closed off because and then Serana would actually get locked up no one's been here in centuries I doubt there's any other place like it in Skyrim it's beautiful 
I've also been uh, looking at other mods to uh, change her model. Even though I'm pretty happy about uh, this particular particular uh, character model I found, there's you know there's some other ones I'm looking at where I'm like, hmm, I could kind of switch it up, I suppose. But you know. Anyways, so you're gonna stand guard and watch while I do this, because I gotta collect some mods. Oh wait, that's right, I have to do the thing with the knife first. I think she said something and I cut her off. Like that bark as much as Dexian said they would. Well, let's find out. Look at them. They've definitely taken a liking to you. And unless I'm seeing things, you're starting to glimmer. Glimmer? I'm a vampire. I don't glimmer. 207. Seven, five of seven. Yep. There's some more moths over there. More over here. Here we go. Seven of seven. You say something, Serana? What now? You ever seen anything like this? It's not like anything else in Skyrim, I can tell you that much. From now or before. There's probably groves like this all over Tamriel. Most people just don't even know what to look for. Now what? The effect around you looks an awful lot like that huge column of light shining on the dais. Let's check that out. Are we ready then? Let's do it. Let's hope I don't go blind. Read the Elder Scroll Blood. I have all three Elder Scrolls. Ah, my eyes! We're gonna read all three. <laughs> Okay, almost thought I lost you there. You went as white as the snow. Um, don't worry, I'm fine. I never trusted those damn scrolls. Who knows what those things could have done to you? Just look at Dex again. What about Ariel's bow? Do you know where we can find it? It's in a place called Darkfall Cave. And it's almost over. We can finally rewrite the prophecy as we see fit. Where is this Darkfall Cave? The scrolls gave me its exact location. Then let's get going. I want to get there before my father has a chance to track us down. What do you know about the bow? Actually, hold on. Lead on. I think I heard something. Ha! 
Well, okay then. What now? So, now that we're not being interrupted, what do you know about the bow? Not much. If you read any history, it shows up from time to time, but it's a hard thing to track. As far as I know, though, it's never been held by a vampire. That would be a new one. What does that have to do with the sun? Ariel is one of the elven gods. He's with the rest of them in Aetherius. The way I've heard it, the sun represents the connection from our world to theirs. Supposedly, the bow draws its energy from the sun itself, which is why it shows up in that prophecy. What exactly does it do? In that part, I don't know. Once we have it, hopefully it'll be obvious. Let's go. All right, so now comes kind of the boring part. So I actually test ran this on um, the regular Skyrim, which let's just say I had more technical issues in that one. I'm hoping I won't in this one, but uh, let's just say I encountered a few bugs that I needed console commands just to finish it. Like, just to complete it. So, I'm hoping that won't be the case, necessarily, but... So... That's where we need to go, actually. The Forgotten Veil. Vale. But here's the funny part. This is incredible. It's like a whole other world. Come on. The bow has to be in this valley somewhere. So I believe there's a whole thing that I actually skipped there, which has me a little concerned. So here's what I'm actually going to do for a moment. Like, hold on a second, where exactly were we? That's right. Yeah, so here's the, uh, this is why I got concerned, and why the uh, regular version actually Welcome crashed on me. This is the way Shr Are you prepared to honor the mantras of art? Then behold Ariel's gift, my child. May it light your path as you seek tranquility within the inner sanctum. These things are a nice way to kind of get around the big area here, the Forgotten Vale. But yeah, just skipping this the way I did kind of causes some issues. Because I'm pretty sure we may have actually skipped meeting the other guy. I don't remember if we have or not. Let's just say I was using TCL to kind of get through this a lot. Because, well, let's... This place is big, and I'm not too fond of having to go through these places. You know, at this point, I was just like, okay, forget it. I'm just going to run through the, through and try to find where we're supposed to go. But also try and find the guy that we're supposed to talk to who he's like, like, I'm one of the last actual, like, frost, like, snow elves, or whatever they're called. I'll tell you, do this. Trying to do this on the regular version is not pleasant because of how unstable it actually is. Doing this on special edition, much easier to try and attempt because of how much more stable this is. Because as you can see, I'm basically running into just the void, and I'm pretty sure the game just crashed or froze. Yeah, because I just ran into an area I wasn't supposed to, <laughs> and that's why. Wow, not even pausing or quick saving is, uh, or quick loading is fixing this. I'm gonna have to straight up 
<laughs> this is what I get for trying to skip a portion. And, yeah. So I think what we're going to have to do is cut off here and just try to kind of run from the beginning because I think skipping some of that stuff could cause some issues. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like this portion of the DLC because just getting from here to the point where you fight the last guy to get the bow, it takes a while. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this takes forever. So I will be right back and we will continue making our way towards the bow. Stay tuned. <laughs> 